And a good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Issues and Attitudes. My name is Jeff Owens, director at WEIU. My, my co-host is Cade Slaughter. Oh, thanks for having me, Jeff. Robinson, Illinois' favorite son. <laughs> and making a repeat appearance, pull up to that mic if you would a little bit, Alex, yeah. is Alex Benishek, the Community Development and Planning Director for the City of Mattoon. So welcome, Alex. Hey, thanks for having me. Thrilled to be here. Good to have you back and uh, kind of in a new, a new job now, in a new position in Mattoon. So talk a little bit about that, please. Yeah, uh, so, you know, I am the uh, Community Development and Planning Director with the City of Mattoon now, uh, and so a little bit different than the Mattoon in Motion role. Uh, basically, it's anything from economic development, planning and zoning, public hearings, uh, down to code enforcement and developing plans uh, for housing. And this weekend, you're actually up in uh, the City of Chicago for the Municipal League Conference. Uh, tell us about what you learned up there in Chi-Town. Yeah, uh, so basically we were there for uh, the Illinois Municipal League. It was myself, Kyle Gill, city administrator, and the mayor. Uh, and there were a variety of different sessions, so we were kind of splitting up. Uh, I was learning a lot about tax increment financing, hmm. uh, which some folks might be familiar with. TIF it, districts. Yeah, yeah, TIF districts. And so, you know, that's really something that's helped us revitalize our downtown and other parts of the community. It's made other projects possible, like the sports complex and things like that. So just learning how we could better use that, what other municipalities municipalities are doing that might be different than what we are and trying to bring all that knowledge home. Okay. So I, I can say that the conference seems like it's pretty insightful, of course. Uh, can you share a particularly challenging project that you've worked on in community uh, development and uh, specifically how you overcame those obstacles in that? Yeah, I'd say just really trying to find a, uh, a roadmap forward for housing. I mean, you know, so <laughs> many, it's just such an issue everywhere you go. Rural, oh, yeah. Urban doesn't matter, <laughs> right? And, you know, for us, it was kind of like back in 2017, uh, the city of Mattoon and Mattoon Emotion made this housing action team. And it was just kind of like, hey, how do we move housing forward and figure that out? And so, you know, coming up to today, it's just kind of like it's very hard to figure out where you are, where you want to be and how you get there without having data to back that up. And so, you know, for about a five year period there, we as the city and Mattoon in Motion were kind of like, hey, where do we find this data? How do we know, you know, where exactly we need to focus on? Because it's, it's one thing to just say, oh, that side of town needs a little help. It's another thing to say these specific properties uh, could use the most help and assistance. And uh, this is what we could do to have a plan to attract you know, more developers for housing to town or to prioritize infill development. And so, you know, for us, we ended up uh, partnering with the Illinois Housing Development Authority, mm -hmm. and we created a, a community revitalization plan that should be uh, up for approval at the next city council meeting. Uh, so, you know, really excited to have worked with uh, Lakeland College throughout that process. They uh, kind of were our GIS interns uh, for that project. And so we went around and surveyed literally every single house in the city of Mattoon, and it was like an 18 month partnership. Uh, so yeah, I mean, so for us, now that we have this plan, uh, so now we've kind of overcame that, um, you know, the, hey, we don't know what's going on here. Now yeah. we have a really good idea of what's going on. And so now we can kind of use that information to go after the next hurdle, which is, okay, where are the developers? How do we get with them? And how do we make development uh, easier uh, in Mattoon? When you say that plan goes in front of the city council at the next meeting, what has to happen? They obviously have to pass it, but kind of, mm -hmm. could you give us a nuts and bolts of what that means for, you know, citizens? Yeah. So basically it, it just means that we have a document that can kind of serve as a roadmap. Cause again, if you don't know where you are, uh, you know, it's pretty hard to figure out where you want to go and how you get there. Yeah. Oh, of course. Uh, and you know, Google maps, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, for us, it, it's kind of our plan for, you know, how we get that done. And so, you know, there's a number of incentives that we could utilize. Uh, there's specific tax credits, be it historic or some for workforce housing, uh, that we could utilize that this plan actually helps us utilize better by having it on the books. Same thing for like grant applications, stuff like that. Um, so, you know, you'd be able to kind of use this document to say, hey, here's the narratives for, you know, why the city of Mattoon is doing this. So, you know, it's a document for residents to be able to see like, oh, yes, like here, here and here needs some help. These are the available grant opportunities or potential developers that might be able to help us out. And then, uh, you know, basically actually you know, focusing on some strategic doing to actually implement that plan is really our main focus right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So how do you balance the needs and desires of the community with the practical limitations of city planning? Uh, I know you talked a lot about what you just did, of course, yeah. uh, with that, and that seemed to be pretty beneficial. 
the big thing is just trying to get folks to come out. Uh, you know, I can't say enough how just how much of an astounding response rate we got for our surveys related to this. So it wasn't just us going out and surveying the physical structures. Mm -hmm. We also put out surveys to engage the community saying, hey, what do you want to see in Mattoon? You know, how do you feel about housing? How do you feel about downtown? How do you feel about nightlife, right? And so we had about 560 people respond to that survey, which for a municipality of our size is, is pretty decent. Yeah. Um, and from there, we also hosted a variety of, uh, we call them community charrettes, but like a town hall meeting, basically, uh, where we had 100 people come out during a tornado warning. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, at the Cross County Mall, we had them come out. And so, you know, they're really dedicated, <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Seems like it. And, and, you know, just really having an open discussion about, hey, you know, what is it that you want? Because at the end of the mm -hmm. day, we don't get to balance those needs or desires uh, unless people tell us what they are. And so, you know, no no process is perfect, but we're trying to be as actively engaged, especially in regards to housing as yeah. we can. So, and what would you say the most prevalent response from those surveys were specifically? We need more homes. Yeah. Oh, of yeah. course. And, and middle class <laughs> yeah. Homes. yeah, yeah, middle class homes. There's plenty um, of mansions people can buy, and obviously we're, you're, is the middle class is what we're at soon. And Charleston, for that matter, really needs more homes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, three oh, yeah. beds, two baths is really the main thing that came out of that. A surprising number of people uh, twenty seven percent of people that filled out those surveys said that they would be interested in a tiny home option. Hmm. Uh, so we literally changed the law to make that happen. <laughs> oh, of course, uh, so, I've seen lots yeah. of that just on Amazon. I mean, Walmart, I've even heard it's thinking about those uh, small houses, of course, yeah. you know, about yeah, 10, 15,000 or so, I believe. Yeah. And, and I mean, it would have to be something that meets codes. It probably couldn't be like a shed you put up, right? Oh, no, but, of course. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, uh, and that's a great example of just, you know, kind of some of the ingenuity that's going on in, uh, you know, uh, housing right now. So, yeah. Of course. And conversely, one of the, some of the things that I'm, I mean, personally being a Matt I is glad of the, some older houses are being torn down. Yep. Some dilapidated projects are coming down. So tell us where we are in that process and, and what we can expect. Yeah, so I, I mean, a lot of this was identified through some of that data that we got from the GIS survey, but other stuff is just community members reaching out to us. And so, uh, yeah, since we started getting aggressive about it this year, since May, we've demolished approximately 12 homes uh, throughout the city of Mattoon. All of them were unfit for human habitation uh, with unlikely buyers for rehab, open, abandoned. And yeah. these are homes that nobody's living in. Uh, or at least the legal occupants are not yeah. living there. Uh, and so that process is, you know, a long one. Uh, either A, you go through city court, or B, you go through something called the fast track demolition process or quick take demolitions. Uh, and there, there's a lot of legal stuff I probably won't dive into there. <laughs> no, but of course. It, it's a <laughs> long, yeah, yeah, 30 <laughs> to 60 day uh, process. Okay. And so, and is that ongoing? So there'll be a new yep. demolition coming up once it, it every one of those fits Absolutely. the process? And so at some point we are going to run out of money for this year because this is the most aggressive we've been in a, in a little while. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so uh, typically we allocate about 20% of our gaming funds towards demolitions, which is about $130,000 on an annual basis. Uh, and to date, I think we've hit about 90, something like that. So That's not too bad. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. good. I mean. It shows where people's money is going, and, and people like to see that, I assume, right? Yeah, and, and back to uh -huh. community engagement. You know, we started making posts about these on Facebook, which have really kind of blown up. Yeah. Uh, and in the beginning, it was kind of like, oh, you know, that's not even in town. That one's kind of bad. And now it's just like, great job, guys. And so, <laughs> you know, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and I, I got to give some props to our team members, too. You know, uh, Steve Sudcamp and Gary Carter. Uh, just fantastic guys on our team that help make all this stuff possible. Okay. Let's say, uh, how do you see? How do you foresee the future of urban planning development just in the Mattoon Charleston area in general? So I can't speak for Charleston. Uh, well, of course, but, but we're pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, but but I, I'd say you know really just addressing the housing issue at least on the Mattoon side of things is huge, uh, especially you know workforce style housing as well. Figuring out what that looks like and you know how we make sure that 
you know, regardless of who you are, you know, you're able to find a quality, you know, domicile. Um, and outside of that, I'd say, you know, tons of retail development with the sports complex, other places, you know, you guys are getting Sonic here, uh, and, uh, you know, basically just a, a focus on that. But one of the things that I personally want to try to strive towards is maybe tweaking a little bit of how our TIF districts works. Uh, to help out some of the small business owners and things like that. Mm-hmm. The other thing that's happened, uh, everybody's kind of, they, they focus on downtown and they focus on Emerald Acres, but the uh, Lake Mar- uh, the Lake Mattoo Marina and Dock system is so much better. Talk about your involvement in there and what people can see uh, before the, you know, b- right now out there at Lake yeah. Mattoo and the Marina and even the beach area is back open. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, we had a fantastic team work on that project. So the city of Mattoon received a $600,000 uh, open space land acquisitions grant uh, and development grant uh, for improvements to the marina. And we also received a boat area access development grant. Both of those are from IDNR uh, to install a kayak launch. And so basically we have this awesome ADA kayak launch. Uh, if you got a photo up there, that's, yeah, uh, yeah you got the parking lot <laughs> yeah. there. Man, and that's, that's my mom on the kayak, actually. <laughs> that's awesome. <Jeez. laughs> uh, so basically, you know, you can get up there in and out in like five seconds. Uh, uh, it's pretty great, but uh, yeah, new marina parking lot, playgrounds, uh, and then also, uh, you know, uh, tons of erosion shoreline control uh, things through riprap uh, and a variety of other things. But I, I can't, uh, you know, thank and thank the folks enough that were on our team, uh, John Wurtzba and Whitney Carnes, uh, you know, really pushed that forward. Uh, also, Jim Clausen uh, from the city, and uh, not to mention friends of Lake Mattoon donated towards the project as well. Hmm. So now, sure. what's the next out Through there? Is there? Is there other projects out there that you've you've earmarked, or is it something you feel good about where it sits right now? So we feel pretty good right now. We have a ton of ideas, and we were trying to apply again this year, but we found out that we were not on a list uh, called the distressed communities list, uh, and it's just hmm. distressed for like lack of access to nature. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't know Illinois is 46 in the nation for access to public lands. So anything we can do to improve hmm. that is That's great. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we. We weren't on that list this year, so we would have had to fund half of the project ourselves. So we're just kind of figuring out maybe ways how we could achieve more improvements to Lake Mattoon, but maybe through a private development route. Okay. So uh, how do you uh, stay updated with the latest trends and best practices in urban planning? Strong Towns. (laughs) All day. Uh, Strong Towns is a great organization. Mm -hmm. Uh, Also kind of looking into the American Association of Municipal Executives, uh, just kind of seeing how cities as, as a whole work. Uh, and then every year I'm uh, privileged to be able to go to the Community Development Institute in Springfield. Uh, it's hosted by the Illinois o- Institute for Rural Affairs, and you see all the people from downstate uh, are usually at, at those conferences, so you learn a ton. And just uh, like just the other day, I was in uh, Sullivan talking with them, just trying to see what they're doing for uh, affordable housing and stuff like that. So really it's just it's reading the stuff, you know, and most importantly, meeting the people that have similar roles and networking with them, helping them solve problems. And yeah, of course. For me, lack of paying attention in the last few uh, couple of months, uh, upcoming on the ballot in November for the city of Mattoon is a change possibly of how the city government is formed and uh, going back to more of a city manager instead of a mayor. Will that affect your job or will affect how you work? Or, or what are your thoughts on this on the ballot? Uh, I so I can't really speak as a city staff member yeah. uh, about that. I I don't think that would necessarily uh, affect me directly. Just who you're reporting to. Yeah. Uh, but you know I I know that there's a group that's uh, I, I wrote it down in case I was asked. <laughs> uh, vote yes for mattoon.com. I know that's the group that's pushing that. So if people are trying to learn more, they could go there. I'm not advocating for it. It's just facts that's the group that's doing it it um, seems like there was a lot yeah. not a lot of information was available for it and all of a sudden over the past last few days at work people are in it hey did you hear about it? yeah i even got a note from our president says are you up to date on that i said i'm trying to be and then you happen to yeah. be coming today so i thought I'd at least ask I, i'd you. love to talk about it but i can't okay so. uh, no we don't yeah. want to get we don't want to get in trouble <laughs> so, so, uh, i am curious about this so uh just specifically how do you handle conflicts of interests or differing opinions within the community regarding development projects uh (laughs) definitely engaging the community i mean you have to talk to people before you start doing stuff oh of course Uh, and you know really it's trying to understand people you know my my big thing is if there's somebody who i 
you know, I'm having a disagreement with on a project or they're against something the city's doing, my first ask is like, typically is like, hey, let's go get some coffee, you know, and try <laughs> to talk them through that and yep. and really just try to understand their, their point of view. Uh, and, you know, for more controversial things, it's trying to work with the developer to make a mutual solution. Uh, you know, we had a really good example of that recently, but that project still didn't happen. Uh, but we, we were pretty close to, you know, there's something about setbacks too close to a road. We were like, all right, push back 800 feet, maybe try to put some housing there. And you, you never mm -hmm. know that something like that might happen again someday. But, um, you know, there's a lot of great examples of, uh, you know, especially with the sports complex of just getting out in front of it, talking with the residents and, uh, you know, just being clear and transparent. But for us, uh, I, I'd say our strength as the city is that there's so many people that are invested mm -hmm. in, you know, the community itself that want to be a part of positive change that, you know, it, it's kind of easy for us at the moment. Mm -hmm. With everything going on with Royal Kings, Emerald Acres, and a partnership with the city, uh, it's, it's really popping up fast out there. What are your thoughts on and expectations over the next few months, what we'll see and happen? Uh, Chick-fil-A opening for sure. Yeah, next uh, month, correct, yep, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, and then I, I'd just say, you know, actually being able to drive through there and, you know, see some of the uh, development as it's coming up. I believe uh, they were expecting, and don't quote me on this, but I, I believe they were expecting to actually have some tournaments come in uh, sometime in February. Uh, and so, you know, I'm just very excited to see how that development progresses. And from the city side, I mean, everything's going ahead completely as planned. Uh, developers are coming in for permits, things like that. And, uh, you know, it's our uh, goal to maintain a smooth permitting process so they can get down to the work and get things done. One of the things that is uh, under your purview is the code enforcement. Yep. Um, and I know one of the things I saw, I don't know, is it the last week or so, was political signs can't can't be on, yep. so they have to be on city property and not boulevard? Is that, or I got that backwards? Uh, no, so they can't be on city property, okay. can't be on the city's boulevard because we own that. Uh, and so it has to be on the private property, which means your side of the sidewalk. Okay. Uh, okay. So if it's in the boulevard, we're taking it. Uh, if, if there is some property on your side, sometimes we might move it and put it on there. Uh, but, you know, basically it's just the, we don't want it to look like the city is sanctioning a particular political candidate or issue. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so who does that? Is that a police thing or is that, uh, how's that work? It's police and us. Okay. I mean, really, if we're out and about and we see something, we'll get out of the car and move it or, uh, just take it down to city hall or something. Same thing with PD. Uh, Do you notify the homeowner if you've taken it down so they know it hadn't been stolen? Uh, so for us, uh, we typically just move it and put it on their yard. And so yeah. they'll see that someone moved it. Uh, but. But at that point, I'm I'm not necessarily certain if it becomes like a punitive thing at that point, like yeah. if you could get like a, a nasty gram in the mail or something. <laughs> uh, but we're just saying, hey, you know, we get it. You're passionate about your candidates, your issues. But at the same time, we don't want it to look like we are. You know, yeah, I, I understand. Yeah. Yeah, I just was curious because I know that's yeah. a big thing right now. And obviously, the next six weeks are going to be nothing but election talk <laughs> yeah. everywhere. Oh, that's we, an understatement, <laughs> Jeff. Oh, my goodness. Um, what other things in code enforcement that maybe people don't know about that they're doing wrong, parking the wrong way? Or, you know, can you talk about mm. that? Because I always think those the kind mm. of things are fascinating. Yeah, so parking on the boulevard, can't do that, um, especially if it's like the grassy portion. Some areas that have rock might be grandfathered in really depends on you know the specific situation there uh same thing with fencing if you put it up a fence reach out to the city because uh, we don't want to be in a position where we come out and then say hey you know you've spent all this money on this fence and it's not up to code uh you know maybe you built it a extra foot high or something like that or you didn't put a we have this thing called a vision triangle in the yeah. back uh, that basically prevents like uh, a driver from hitting a child that's walking on the sidewalk. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, really it's just making sure that folks are getting their permits, stuff like that. But uh, Do they come to you for those, your office for those questions since you're the yes. code enforcement? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They'll come to our office, uh, myself, Gary Carter, Stephen Sudkamp. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, just specifically, what role does cultural heritage play in your planning and urban uh, development process uh, I know we can talk about a lot about discourse and all that but just you know there's a lot of cultural heritage and you know especially with towns of hmm. course I guess my question to you is like how would you define that I uh, just really like ideologies you know I mean as far as like you know whether people take a certain side or not I mean a lot of that can affect 
everything, of course. If yeah. you know what I mean, really. It, to some extent, I think you're just saying yeah. like like you know things that have happened in the town and things right. Like you know that things or, that people want to preserve. You know and yeah. really you know fixate harshly on. I guess in that sense. Yeah. I, I'd say the big thing is, again, just, you know, having those dialogues with people. I mean, you can't just say, you know, what's best for an area. You have to engage the residents and oh, of course. You know, see from their, their viewpoints. But for specifically for preservation and things like that, uh, one of the s- things that we've been trying to push is the historic preservation tax credits hmm. uh, in town. And those are for any building that's over 35 years old, which is not that far <laughs> away. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's crazy. You can get uh, it's I always get it mixed up. But one of them is either from the state or the federal government and you get 25 percent tax credits towards a project. Yeah. Uh, and then the other one, state or federal, is 20 percent. That's 35 uh, years or older. Yeah. And okay. so basically, if you get your house on the National Register, uh, or your building, business, whatever, on the National Register, you're then able to tap into those tax credits if you're willing to put in the work to submit an application. Interesting. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's a great way to fund projects, things like that. And it also uh, kind of forces, uh, you, you know, especially if you're getting like a uh, grant, if, if you're just by yourself and you're funding it yourself, you don't have to pay attention to any of the Department of Interior standards. But if you have like a state or federal grant on top mm. of the tax credits, any improvements you do uh, have to be up to a certain level, which ensures that, you know, certain aspects are being preserved in the community. Um, but uh, another thing is just like some of the mural work they've done downtown. I mean, mm-hmm. it's been really representative of, you know, the history of Matt Toon, especially the civility one that they have yeah. downtown. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think especially how you, um, you know, work that into your art and your messaging is huge. So we've covered that a lot on Newswatch. I know those are very, really important. Uh, Jeff, as you're saying? Well, I was just thinking, you know, other things when you talk about downtown, other, other, other projects downtown coming up, any construction work? I know there's been a lot of sidewalk yeah. and stuff work downtown. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I mean, we got some things going on, especially in the 1400 block. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you got Thai Noodle coming in again, and I, I just ate there the other day. It's fantastic. <laughs> uh, it was actually the last time I was on here, you asked me what my favorite restaurant was and then they closed the next week oh <laughs> so my i'm goodness. really happy to have them back <laughs> that's ironic. um and uh yeah so i mean re- really uh you know you have that going on we're really excited to have them back here uh and then you know re- really just waiting for all that streetscaping stuff to kind of wrap up so that we can start beginning to plan uh for next steps and you got a couple of events i mean believe it or not we're already yeah. talking about a halloween event and yep. christmas already i know it's yeah. September, yep. it's fun so my carries those. around the corner man yeah so celebrate downtown matt tune uh for those that aren't aware is the group that hosts the uh, trunk or treat and the celebrate christmas event downtown it's not a city group or anything like that we're just a group of volunteers downtown business owners and people that care about downtown uh that have gotten together over the past couple of years uh to you know basically host awesome events for matt tune and uh you know coles county families uh and yeah i believe we have it coming up on the uh 25th yeah and there's uh, the christmas one yeah. right there if you watch it on tv <laughs> yeah uh yeah it looks like uh, for those on the radio here uh october 25th 5 to 8 p.m and december 6th uh 5 to 8 p.m and uh we're working on something special. I was going to try to get this out yeah. of here. Uh, okay, we got to put our journalist hat on. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's another big event you're trying to do. Can you give us a time frame. Yeah. So, so, so this event is either going to be this year at the Christmas event yeah. or it's going to be next year at the Christmas event. And uh, we're still working on funding, but we're, our plan right now, we're about 75% funded, is to have a 100 drone drone show oh, uh, ooh, right man, in the heart of Mattoon downtown. Uh, and so we're trying to build some excitement about it now that we're pretty much right at that milestone. And uh, we think it's going to be something that's going to draw people from well outside of the Mattoon area and just be something really special for, you know, the kids here. And that that's really what all this is about. That's cool. Now, are the, is the lighting all done so you can change the lights during the holidays and nighttime and all that stuff? I know all the different businesses, is that, is that finished? Yeah, they have some of the lighting going on. I think they had some plans to expand, uh, and that's still, you know, kind of going forward. Uh, that's really more of a tourism question, okay. but right. yeah. You guys are all intertwined. I can't yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there you go. We have a few minutes left. We're talking to Alex Beneshek today here on Issues and Attitudes. you have any last questions, Kate, or not? I was going to say, uh, if I can think of one in the next couple minutes or so, uh, I'm going to let you go first. That's so. fine. <laughs> I, I, one of the things I like to do, what's the favorite part of your job? I mean, what, what's the most fun you have? 
I'd say the people, absolutely. I mean, I get to meet mm-hmm. so many different people. Every day is is different from the next. And I mean, it's just like, uh, honestly, being able to serve others is kind of at the the core. That's of what you've always done. Your whole yeah, life. you know, five terms in AmeriCorps, did Peace Corps, and you know, this is just another extension of that for me. Was mm-hmm. there a magical yeah. moment when you knew that, hey, maybe Mattoon could be my home for a while? Because you know, you were kind of scheduled to be here for just a little bit, then then move yeah. on correctly, and yep. then you you, you stayed mm-hmm. and you got this prom- this new job for the city. So is, was there a moment that you said, hey, this is all right? Yeah, yeah. I uh, for me, it was. Uh, kind of twofold. I was, well, one, I mean, just walking around Douglas Hart with my girlfriend, who's a professor at EIU. Uh, you know, I was just like, wow, this girl's kind of cool. You know, I've been here for a year. Like, and, uh, you I'm know, I'm keeper. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I mean, it, it's just walking around there, uh, you know, and, and just realizing like the, the opportunities that exist here, uh, you know, are probably tenfold of what exists in my hometown of Sarasota, Florida for somebody like me. You know, like every day I can go into the office of the mayor and say, hey, what's up? You know, go bug him. In Sarasota, Florida, I helped get the former mayor elected, and there's no way I could do that. (laughs) Uh, So, you know, it's just kind of you can have a lot more impact in a smaller town. And just because, you know, we might have a smaller population or something like that than a larger city like Champaign or Chicago, wherever, it doesn't mean that our opportunities are similarly reduced. Uh, Hmm. And, you know, the other thing that really made me decide to stay here was, um, you know, the outpouring of kind of support for folks that kind of came up to me afterwards when Mm -hmm. they knew my term had ended pretty much uh, in 2022. They were like, hey, what are you doing? You're going to stay, right? And (laughs) and I was just like, whoa, like I've, I've never... You know, I've never really had that happen before. And so, that's cool. Yeah. So what advice would you give to someone that's looking to pursue a career in community development or urban planning like you? Mm. I'd say uh, definitely try to find a mentor, somebody that's worked in that field. Um, you know, for me, that mentor is Kyle Gill, easily one of the best bosses I've ever had in my life. Uh, and, you know, outside of that, I mean, do your research, find some stuff online to read, you know, get involved in the literature, read interesting books. A uh, really good one is The Death and Life of Great American Cities. Hmm. Uh, highly recommend that. Jane Jacobs, she's the queen of urban planning. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, outside of that, I'd, I'd also suggest, you know, try to find a a role in something that's adjacent to that if you feel like you can't really break into it. The thing for me, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that was AmeriCorps and Peace Corps uh, that directly led me to this kind of work. Okay. We're about out of time, so we don't have to ask the the world-famous questions, but real quick, business you would love to see come to the area? Ooh. And it can be business type if you don't want to name names. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll do two, uh, chicken and pickle, because that would be amazing. Pickleball group, but also chicken. And then I'd love to see a brewery. We, we got to uh, get going on a brewery. You know, I feel, oh, yeah, that would t- be great. <laughs> I don't know why we don't have a brew pub, but it, it makes no sense. But it is what it be, right? Oh, well, that's course. Alex Benishik, Community Development and Planning Director for City of Mattoon. Great to see you, and thanks for coming in. Thanks for your Thank time. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Kate, for another great show. Oh, yeah. We are WEIU. Everybody have a great week. We'll be back next Monday for Issues and Attitudes.